So I wanted to do a demonstration of a simple form of uh, local gravity, what um, people tend to call point gravity. And I added also a jumping feature, so notice how I can jump, uh, and it jumps relative to the, to the local gravity zone, wherever that is. Let's see if I can move very gently. Wanna, there we go. And then, notice if I jump, I can jump. And currently I haven't set a limit on the how local the field is, so it'll just keep bringing me back here, and I can just cruise around this thing, <laughs> and notice I sort of stay in orbit. It keeps wanting to gravitate toward the center, and uh, so this is the simple point gravity system. I'm going to demo a fancier thing um, very soon, which is going to work for that loop, um, but. Because notice, I just, it's, you just, in my system, I just hold down a button and it's, it'll switch to local gravity if uh, I activate it fast enough. So if I hit it and jump off, nothing, ha <laughs> oh, did, I think I turned, did I turn that off? Let's see, I think in the version, yeah, I think in this version I turned that feature off. But anyway, so it, the way it works in the code is that the ball identifies who it, who it, hit most recently and then it gravitates to the center of that object, whatever that is, when you switch to to local gravity. Turning off gravity is very easy, but notice how when you're using simple point gravity like this, there's a bit of a problem with uh, shapes that are hollow in the center, because <laughs> the code wants to gravitate to the center of the object, which is what this is doing. And I actually do have a solution for this. Um, which I'm going to be showing you pretty soon. So this is the problem, and I basically uh, filmed this portion of the video to show the problem in action and why the other, the fancier code is actually very useful. <laughs> actually, that does look kind of entertaining, though. <laughs> so, um, so again, you can activate it and deactivate it anytime you want. So bump something, latch on, right? And then you can just cruise around, you can even get on top and then turn gravity off and then you're back to normal gravity, right? And you can actually fall again, but I want to stay local. Alright, so that's simple gravity. And if you have a tether, then you can use your tether while you have simple gravity, which I thought was kind of entertaining. Let's make it a little longer. So let's jump off. So, <laughs> I just thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> so that's simple gravity. Very entertaining. Oh, and this is fun. Well, check this out. Bing. <laughs> I like that. Then you can bounce. <laughs> so, that's simple gravity. So this now is a demonstration of my fancier gravity system, which I call relative point gravity. Uh, basically, I'm simulating the ball having a magnetic field. Notice everything is normal at the moment. And I'm running a trace. If you look, there's a little, a little, those little lines. Those are traces. Um, that I'm actually showing. So notice most of the time there's only one line. It's really hard to even see. And that means that, see, I, I wrote a very, uh, I wrote a loop to trace out a sphere. Uh, oh, and I also created uh, gravity disengagement. <laughs> so, and I also created that you have to hit it on time when you, see so if you just bounce off, it's not going to activate. You have to hit it in time to make this player have to be a little bit more skilled. Um, so look at how there's that that a uh, 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 bunch of traces going out. That's the magnetic field of the ball trying to find the closest minimum point. And so notice that this is working perfectly fine as as you'd hope for uh, <laughs> for this box because we already showed that we could do this. But I just wanted to prove that I'm trying to conserve resources as much as possible. So when the ball is close enough, it doesn't do many traces, it just actually runs the simple, the um, the regular point gravity. But if the ball gets too far, it the algorithm wants to see, okay, what's the optimal path? And then you actually are running uh, more traces, a maximum of 361 actually. So, so you get the normal effect you'd expect for that box, but now check this out, relative point gravity on this loop. I have to activate it on time. Because remember before, it wasn't going relative 
to the it was always going to the center right but now look the ball is trying to find the closest surface so it actually finally you can work with shapes that have a hollow center and um, otherwise known as uh, concave shapes and uh, and look it's relative to the closest point and I got out of range so it disconnected as it should but uh, that's my relative point gravity system uh, and it's not quite as pretty as it would be if the traces weren't here but the traces are very useful for letting you know when extra calculations are being done so so that's my relative point I want to try to make can I make this any more obvious so look <laughs> yay and notice there's one trace always going to the center right that's the one that's trying to conserve resources Look at that go, isn't that awesome? <laughs> Relative point. So completely different behavior than in the first video. <laughs> so I wanted to do a, a final demonstration of relative point gravity. Look at this structure. This is a spiral staircase kind of a thing. And I, using relative point gravity, can ride up the underside of it. <laughs> you don't have to use the top. Who needs the top when you can use the bottom? Sounds like a sexual joke. Look at this, I'm riding up the underside of the spiral, not the top. Prefer to ride the bottom. Maybe from the bottom? Ah, anyway, it's good. <laughs> Just look at this! So this is relative point gravity. Notice the center of this object is obviously nowhere near what this ball is following. This ball is out clearly following the uh, the underside or really it's just the nearest surface look at that isn't that awesome okay finish on top maybe she should no it doesn't matter so thought you'd like that and uh, now look at this check this out jumping works with relative point gravity so I just jumped from one side of the loop to the other see that Whee! I lost my uh, lost the lost the thing there so using relative point um, gravity you can finally work with more complex shapes that are not simple convex objects like big spheres or squares or anything like that you can uh, really get some nice new options and as you can see from the computer's functioning the video it's what my algorithm isn't too intense on uh, processing power as I showed with the debug lines. So let's check out this structure now. This structure looks pretty interesting. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> so this is, again, you saw from the first video as to why what I'm doing right now wasn't even possible before. It's before this would go to the center of this ring. And the center of the ring is, there's nothing there. Check this out. Relative point gravity. I'm very pleased. Rumor has it she was too, judging from the sound she was making. Oh, I love it. So that is my demonstration of relative point gravity. I wonder if I can get a little bit of orbit going around this thing. Ooh. <laughs> got some jump going, a little too much jump. <laughs> so, hopefully you can all make use of this code and get your own relative 3D point gravity system going. <laughs> and of course you can turn it on and off anytime you want. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs>